Pornography is harmless. It's recreational. Everybody's doing it. What's the big deal? That's a load of crock. <clears throat> I have more people. This is probably the number one in all the counselings that we've done. This is probably the number one foe of successful marriages right now is pornography. Not just in men, but it's increasing in women. These wives are struggling with porn too, but uh, predominantly it's men. And so um, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18, it says, flee from sexual immorality. It says, flee. Right? So I know this is the only sin in the Bible where God gives us permission to run from that sin, sexual sins. He says, run from that one. He said, because this is a bad one. You, I give you permission to run. All of the sins, God says, man up, stand up, and, 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 and face the, the, these sins and, and overcome these sins. Sexual sins, you don't want to fall here. And this is why. I'm going to explain here in just a second. But it says, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person is the one who sins against his own body. It's like self-destruct. Proverbs 6.32 even says, whoever commits adultery lacks understanding. And he, I read one translation, uh, or one commentary, which says, and, and the person murders their own soul. This is it right here. So when we're looking at uh, sexually deviant things and, and, and fornication and porn and stuff like this, we, we murder our own souls. We destroy ourselves. It's self-destruct. So <clears throat> where fornication is concerned and pornography is concerned, pornography is defined by Webster's as um, that which is designed to arouse sexually. This is what they're... The, er, <laughs> That's all they say it is. It's just a surface definition, and it's wrong, actually. That which is designed to arouse sexually, that can be not just images and movies, not just songs. It can be the way a person dresses. It could be the way a person talks. It could be pornographic. And so, but what is porn? What's the proper definition of porn? Well, you look it up in, in, in the Greek, where in, in 1 Corinthians 6.18, it says, flee from sexual immorality flee from fornication that's what it's talking about what fornication in the greek is pornea and that word uh it literally means illicit deviant wanton sinful sex and so if it's if it's godless not god approved god says avoid it but see we, we we're not getting this message and we're diving right in and we're saturated with sexual sins, sexual enticements, sexual offers. And so um, if you've seen porn, let me just fast forward here. If you've seen porn, there's two basic fundamental uh, messages of porn. One is that, and we've all seen the, the porn, the, the videos, that uh, the women are secretly nymphos. They're sexual freaks and they got to have it. All you have to do is touch the right buttons and, and you, you're doing her a favor by turning her on. And that's a lie. I promise you it's a lie. The brig is full of a lot of people who thought they were doing this woman a favor. And now they've molested this woman. They've violated this woman. And um, all because they bought into this lie. I, I have so many stories I could tell you about this, this foolishness. And the other thing is that, um, that sex without love works. Sex without love works. It does not. You need it, sex with love completes you it's good it's healthy but you take love legitimate godly love out of it and just try to have sex it's just an act as a matter of fact where where porn is involved i've i've isolated into five different stages and this is something that i've learned over the years uh there's five stages i use the acronym ideas i-d-e-a-s and so initially the first stage is the introduction stage now this don't don't miss this the introduction stage is one of the most important stages because that's when you were first introduced to something pornographic. You didn't understand it, but it was pornographic. It could have been, you could have been five years old. You could have been 10 years old, whatever. But, but you saw something sexual or maybe someone touched you in a sexual way. It was pornographic. And why I say and stress that this is at the introduction stage is so important is because generally speaking, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. What ends up happening, your first generally speaking your first experiences with sex have a way of imprinting you and programming you and that becomes your pattern pretty much for the rest of your life unless you get some healthy teaching and, and, and recovery and so guys what ends up happening because you're introduced to just 
porn and masturbation, you're introduced to just sex is just an act. You were never taught you were supposed to imprint on the girl, not imprint on the act. And this is how you treat sex now. You tr this is how you treat the girl now. It's just an act. You were supposed to imprint on the girl. You were never taught that. Instead, you learned imprint on the act, and that's all sex is for you. I know I'm talking to somebody out there. And then there's, um, that's the introduction stage. And then there's the desensitization stage. That means you become desensitized to some of the things. Whereas before, uh, maybe just bikini photos were, were getting, getting you aroused and satisfying you. It's not enough anymore. Now you got to see them naked. And then now you got to see two girls. Now you got to see two girls and, and that hobbit and the midgets and the goats. And then your, your parameters just increase and increase and increase and it's never ending. And so you become desensitized to content. And then it goes to that next stage, the E, the escalation. You escalate in content. You also escalate in time. And, and, and what ends up happening now that you're immersed and you're saturated with, with pornographic images, it's never enough. And so you just you spend so much more time. I got people who rush home to work during lunch hour because they'll know they'll be alone. And, and they, they go home to rub one out. Yeah, that, that, there's nothing healthy about this. And then after the escalation stage, there's the addiction stage. You become addicted to it. You can't stop, and you know you can't stop. And um, you're trying to stop, and you're, you're trying to fast. And you're trying, There's a way to get over this. I'll, I'll, I'll get to this. And finally, and you know you're addicted to it, and you can't stop. This is the worst stage of all, the solicitation stage. This is the application stage. This is where you actually uh, 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 put into practice what, what you have learned through porn. Porn is reality. I mean, I'm sorry, porn is fantasy, but it becomes reality to you up here. And so what ends up happening, you take this fantasy and then you bring it into reality and you start breaking laws. You start hurting people. This is, this is the, the, the problem with porn. What we see in porn, I've had men tell me in prison that uh, everything I learned about porn, uh, everything I learned about sex, I learned through porn. And they thought it was okay to... Uh, spray a woman with their semen. They thought that's what they were supposed to do. Where'd you learn that from? Porn. And so what I'm telling you is that uh, uh, this, 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 this solicitation stage, you go out and you start to pick up the young girls or you try to rape and you think you're doing them a favor. And then come to find out after you've been caught and busting your career is over, your, your marriage is over, your life is over, you find out, at what point did I believe in this lie? That's one of the lies of pornography, that, that, that women are secretly nymphos and they, they're hot and you just have to touch them in the right way and you're doing them a favor. This is what guys believe, that, that, that women really want it. That's a lie of porn. It's, it's just not true. And so um, you can break this porn habit. If you contact me, I, I, I'll talk to you personally. But one of the best things you can do is take the 30-day challenge. For 30 days, and you can do this for 30 days. For 30 days, no more porn, no more masturbation. And instead of feeding your flesh all this garbage, feed your spirit man the word of God. And your spirit man will rise up and be stronger. And then I promise you, if you're married, all of your affections will no longer be split with pornography and your wife. She'll get all of your attentions. That's the word of God. That's just the way it is. Love you guys. And bow down.